Hello, Just Too Good here. Today we're taking a look at the LEGO Creator Riverside Houseboat set with 396 pieces, two minifigures, and it retails for $40 in the United States. This is technically my 1,000th review. Isn't that crazy? I remember starting reviews in 2012, and it's just been a long journey, but thank you guys for sticking around for all this time. Don't worry, a 1,000th review special will come out when I get a specific set I'm waiting for, so probably next week. So here's the first minifigure of the set. I like the flannel shirt. I also like the face print, which those two prints are all fairly new, which he has a worried expression at the back. And I really don't like how they made this fishing pole, which they just use the whip piece and they attach a fish at the end. It doesn't really look like a fishing pole to me. And you'll see I kind of even confuse it as something else later in the review because I film these totally out of order. I usually do the builds that I want to build the least at the first so that I could keep the really cool builds at the end. But yeah, very odd choice for a fishing pole. But I guess I wanted to keep the pieces limited. Here's the second minifigure. She has a newer face print as well. Also some uncommon coloring for the legs and the hair. This camera is a very simple build and she has some back torso printing but no alternate facial expression. The first of the builds we'll be taking a look at is the main houseboat build. So for the Riverside houseboats, I love the colors on this with the reddish brown and the sand green, but also the design of this has some standing room inside it and it looks really authentic to what it's trying to be and unique because we don't get much Lego boats like this with almost a steamboat-esque design. Now we have this ceiling that can be removed if you want to access the cabin. And at the top of the ceiling, they do use a little flag which you could adjust and also a light at the back. And inside we have a chair also some other things, but if you want to get a better look at it, they give you another way to open up and look in the cabin, which is just this back wall. And that opening feature kind of reminds me of the Lego camper sets from City, which there's a sink, also a cup on that wall, some drawers as well. There's a bed in the corner, a chair that you can move around since it's on a two by two jumper, and also this steering wheel right here, which you can move around. Of course, you could also access the cabin by opening up this door, but those other ways give you an easier way to move around and play inside. This side of the houseboat has enough room to fit a couple of minifigures and even a little plant design. I also like how they did these lights right here, which are present at the back as well. And that back area, or you could even view it as the front of the boat, depending on which way you look at it, has a swivel chair, which is on one of those turning plates instead of a two by two jumper like the inside. Also a sink, a little probably like a, a pot or whatever you want to look at it as, and this basket holding an orange fish, which I always love getting the orange fish parts. And if you want to crawl off the boat, you could use this ladder right here. But either way, that's it for the boats build. Let's take a look at some of the side builds. There's also the crocodile build, which while this uses basic pieces, it looks like a crocodile. They did a really good job with this. It's kind of dark too, because it's holding a bird in its mouth. It's about to chomp on it. So that's a dark end for that. The brick built bird is pretty simple and it just rests on a one by two jumper and you could open and close the mouth, which it uses that uh, newer print for the eyes, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like how that turned out. Also these feet right here can be moved individually because they are cl clipped on. So you can put them in different positions, but if you want to make it a real crocodile, you really got to put it laying flat on the floor like that. And you could even adjust his tail a bit, which it does have one point right here in the middle that's clipped onto two clips. So you could move that part and then you could even move this back tail. But again, crocodiles usually have all their parts just laying on the ground when they're on land. But that is it for the crocodile build. And finally, they also give a pelican, which is just on a random wood. I don't know if it's like a tree stump or whatnot. They don't connect it to anything. It would have been cool to maybe just have a platform because he tends to fall off because he's very top heavy or, you know, the whole build falls off since he's attached to it. Either way, the Pelican build is pretty clever for the limited amount of pieces they use. And I like how that can be taken off and you could play around with it and you could even make a minifigure hold on to the bottom. But that is it for this first build. Now we'll take a look at the second alternate build. So here's the second build, the seaplane. So the main part of this alternate build is of course the seaplane. And I like how this one looks, uh, but it's probably my least favorite out of the three because for a seaplane, it looks pretty unique, but I think the other two builds are a little bit stronger. Granted, I haven't built any of them yet because I'm technically building this one first. 
Now it does have a brown look to it that gives it a nice authentic wooden look. Also with some of that nice sand green that's used with the other builds. This propeller up front is kind of interesting where you could spin it around and it's fun to play around with those. I just love propellers in general. Also, how you could get to the cockpit is that you actually lift up the wings right here, which are on a hinge. And you have enough space for one minifigure, which all he's using to control this is one of those stamp pieces and a flower. I guess that's nice part usage, but then again, I would have preferred maybe some other parts to illustrate the control panel. The wings themselves don't have too much going on with them. There's some vents, but uh, a lot of studs are showing there, which I wish some of that was more smoothed out. At the side, you have a little ladder so that he could climb up into the cockpit. You have some side windows as well with some glass to them. And there's not too much else going on with the seaplane. Bottom uses some of these bumper pieces that I could glide across the floor you play around with it on. And yeah, not too much else with this build. And now let's take a look at the side builds of this one. This first one is a little pier where you have a seat to put a minifigure on. There's also a whip being held on the side right here, or maybe you could interpret that as a fishing pole. Also, we have a cup, this little rack holding a lifesaver piece, and a basket holding an orange fish, which those are always nice to get, but that's it for this part. And for the last parts of this alternate build, this girl seems to have the camera on a selfie stick this time around. And then we have this crab right here, which I love this build. They use a piece that is the modified one by one, usually used for teeth as the legs, and it's quite clever. I also like how they clipped on the claws and they use that modified one by two as the claws themselves, which is some nice part usage. His eyes also have some relatively newer printing, but that's it for this alternate build. Now let's move on to the last one. And here's the final alternate build, the fishing village. First, we'll look at what LEGO describes as a pier and cafe, and this design is really awesome. I kind of want to buy a second one of these just so that I could have two of these on display. Either way, the pier itself has a little camera at the end and also a ladder. This front part has almost a fish market-esque design. I love the sign up here and how they built that, and also how they have that fish on display. You don't get any workers for the inside, but that makes sense. They only have two figures that are appropriate for both of the builds. The inside has a little dining table with a lamp on it, and I really like that lamp build. Also two chairs, you have a light inside, and you can open the door just like that. Not too much else going on here. It's adorable, it's small, but it's perfect for an alternate build of this set. And also there's this little boat side build for that alternate build, which I think the cafe is a little bit more interesting, but I like how this has space to fit almost, I guess, four minifigures if you really want to squeeze it, but mostly two, which are the characters in the set. The actual cabin to control it doesn't have much space to fit a minifigure in, but they do have a nice display of these windows on the side. Also, there's a lifesaver on the side, and this crane at the back, which you can rotate this part at the end if you want it to hold something, and you can adjust the crane up and down since it is on a clip. You even have a little cup at the edge of the boat, but either way, that's it for the builds of this set. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. As for the box, it's a $30 long box, which has some little details at the back for the builds. So this book is very thick. There's no ads at the end though, but it does hold all the instructions for the three builds. So overall, all three builds are good in their own right. I think some of them are phenomenal, like this one and the village. The plain one's definitely the weakest of the bunch, but it's still fine. The thing that's holding this back is the price. I mean, these are using very basic pieces. Why is this $40? It doesn't really make sense. As a $30 set, this would be perfect in my opinion. The design of this houseboat now becomes more complicated because it's like, okay, they should have included a pier or something because it still feels like a $30 set. And then both of those side builds feel like a $20 set. That's something with Lego Creator. The side builds will feel like smaller and cheaper in their value, but that's okay because they're sort of hitting those different skill levels. But when you have all these sets just feeling like they're under a certain price range, that is a big flaw in my opinion. Again, $40 is not really worth it for what you get in here. And it, it hurts me to say that because I really like the builds of the set, but they should have made this cheaper in my opinion. 
but still there's great designs in here so if you get on clearance which you probably will you could should definitely consider picking this one up so i would rate this one a b plus but that's it for now hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys later peace out